Coyote Railway, follow the tracks Go out at sunset, sunrise, coming back Ow-wee. Hello, this is Joe Cottonwood, reading from my novel, Danny Ain't. Just as Pop predicted, the night was foggy. No moon, no stars. After waiting the seven hours, I picked up the pieces of the mirror and only cut my fingers once. I put the pieces in a grocery bag, and the Elvis too. Might as well bury them both, in case it's bad luck to break a plaster Elvis and nobody's figured it out yet. Pop brought a flashlight. It was plenty dark outside. No street lights. Not even a light from a house. Pop and me, we live in the mountains just outside a little town called San Puerco. Our trailer is downhill from a farmhouse and a chicken coop. Workers used to live here when they helped with the crops. Now the old farmer won't plant the fields. He just lets another man run cattle on his land, so he lets us use the trailer. We pay rent. Pop walked behind me. I asked him to turn on the flashlight. No, he said. You can't see with a flashlight. Are the batteries dead? No. He turned it on. See? Now you're blind. I can see. All you can see is where the flashlight's pointing. You're blind everywhere else. And anybody else around here, he can see you. It was true. He turned it off. Now I was really blind. Then my eyes readjusted to the dark, and Pop was right. I could see more, a bigger area anyway, with it off. Pop knows things like how to walk in the dark. His mother was Cherokee Indian. What he didn't learn from being half Cherokee, he learned from fighting in Vietnam. Nam, he calls it. In Nam, he said, you either learned or you died. And he said a lot of people learned and still died anyway. Pop talks about dead people a lot. Like they're still alive, sometimes. We climbed a barbed wire fence and walked through the grass up a hill. At the top of the hill, there's an old graveyard with just one family buried there. Three tombstones, one fallen over. Somebody brought an old metal bed frame up there and set it over one of the graves to keep the cattle from stomping it, I guess. I set down the grocery bag and the shovel. You can dig the hole now, Pop said. Just don't dump the mirror in until midnight. I brought the Elvis, too. Good idea, Pop said, and he sat down, leaning against the trunk of an oak tree. How will we know when it's midnight? I asked. Neither of us had wristwatches. I'll tell you. Pop doesn't believe in wristwatches. It comes with being part Cherokee. He uses a different kind of time. I can't explain it, but it's a time that don't use numbers. The right time, he calls it. Not the real time, but the right time. I dug a hole. Not too deep. The ground was soft. I hoped I didn't dig up any bones. That would be bad luck for sure. It was dark, of course, but I could see. If there's light anywhere, the fog sucks it up and spreads it out, sort of glowing. The lights from town, plus the moon up above the fog, even though we couldn't see them, were making light. Just enough. Who's buried here, Pop? Some farmer and his family. Shine your light on the gravestone. I want to read it. No. Pop, if you don't believe in flashlights, why'd you bring one? Because it's a graveyard. You mean you want the flashlight in case you see a ghost? Ha! Ah, Pop grunted. You believe in ghosts, Pop? I know ghosts. Who? Ha! Ah. You know Mama's ghost? Danny. What? Shut up. My mother died when I was still a baby. 
Sometimes Pop will talk about her. Sometimes he won't. In a graveyard, I guess he won't. The hole was ready. I sat down under the tree with Pop, leaning against the trunk on the opposite side. Wake me when it's midnight, I said. I shut my eyes. I could hear the breeze blowing the fog through the branches of the tree with a soft moaning sound. The dry grass shifted in the wind, crackling, almost, it seemed, tinkling like little bells. Downhill somewhere, I could hear the hooting of an owl. I heard Pop shift in his position. I didn't open my eyes, but I knew Pop didn't like the hooting. He thinks owls are bad luck. Owls can see more than we can, and not just in the dark. They can see the future. If one hoots at you, that's a warning. Of course, I ain't superstitious like Pop. I don't believe in owls being bad luck. I don't believe in ghosts. The hooting stopped. For a minute, all I heard was the crinkling of the grass and the moaning of the tree. The sound a ghost would make, if you believed in ghosts. I was holding my eyes shut. I made up my mind I wasn't going to look. If I looked, that would mean I was worried about ghosts. And I wasn't worried. Then the sound of the grass changed. Maybe the wind shifted. It sounded sort of slithery, like a snake. I wanted to open my eyes to see if it was a snake, but I held them shut. I was afraid I'd be cheating, that I wasn't really worried about a snake. I just wanted an excuse to open my eyes and see if there was a ghost. And I don't believe in ghosts. Then there was a hoot right over my head. I must have jumped a foot off the ground. That owl had landed in the tree we were leaning against. But I never opened my eyes. I could hear Pop shifting. Bet he was nervous. Too nervous to shut his eyes. The wind shifted and the grass went back to its old way of chiming. The branches kept moaning. The owl kept hooting. I hoped for midnight, or the right time, or whatever to come soon. It was too noisy to sleep. The same way turning off your flashlight makes you see better at night, closing your eyes makes you hear better. Hoot! went the owl. Swoosh, went the grass. Moan, went the tree. And with my eyes jammed shut, I'm thinking, hurry up, midnight. Suddenly, there's a sound like a fire siren, and another like a pack of wild dogs, and a groan like a creaky old door. I open my eyes. I jump to my feet. Pop turns on the flashlight. He jumps to his feet. We both try to hide behind the tree, but we don't know what we're hiding from or where it's at. So Pop sweeps the light all over, up and down, around the gravestones, and we edge around the tree with our eyes following the light. And there, in the grass, a little ways down the hill, are two dogs. Just two of them, making noise like there were twenty. As soon as the light hits them, they turn and run. Coyotes, Pop says. He switches off the light. Now I'm blind. I didn't know coyotes lived around here, I say. Didn't, Pop says. My eyes start to see things again. It looks like Pop is smiling. What are you grinning about? Coyotes. Coyotes are back. I'm still standing with my hands against the bark of the tree like I'm hiding from the coyotes. You can bury the mirror, Pop says. It's the right time. I empty the grocery bag into the hole, then shovel dirt over Elvis and the mirror and tamp it down with my feet. Just as I finish, the last of the fog clears away and the moon shines down. Pop was right. It was the right time. Pop's looking at the moon. I hear him whisper to himself, I see the moon, and the moon sees me. The moon sees the somebody I want to see. 
Then he shuts his eyes for a few seconds. I wait until he opens them. Then I ask, Who you want to see, Pop? He don't answer. But I know. It's either my mother or it's Tater. Pop and Tater were buddies in Vietnam. Tater died there. Him and Pop were side by side, and Tater took a hit, and Pop wasn't even scratched, except inside his head. I think Pop knows Tater's ghost, too. We walk down the hill. I carry the shovel. Pop carries the flashlight. He's still grinning. You like coyotes, Pop? He nods. He says, You know the Indians never killed the coyote? Never? Well, hardly ever. Coyote was the Indian's friend. They say back in the beginning of time, the Indian was starving because he couldn't hunt the buffalo. Buffalo's eyes were too good. The Indians tried to sneak up on him, but he always spotted him and ran away. Then Coyote took pity on the Indian. He kicked sand in the buffalo's eyes, and ever since then his vision is poor. So the Indian could hunt the buffalo. I couldn't believe that story any more than I believe in ghosts. But I asked Pop to tell me more about the coyote, and to my surprise, he did. He talked, and we walked down the hill, over the fence, along the dirt road, down the driveway. We sat in the kitchen, and he told me story after story. He loves coyotes. And I loved hearing him talk. Here, for the second night in a row, I was staying up with Pop, getting to know him like never before. He can go for a month of practically ignoring me. A wall goes up. I fix my own meals, wake up when I want, go to bed when I want, hardly even see him. Then something happens. The wall cracks. And for a few minutes or a few hours, he sees nothing but me. I didn't know it. But this night would be my last good crack with Pop for a long, hungry time. That's the end of this episode. This is Joe Cottonwood. The music is by Will Fort. Coyote freight train, rabbits in a line. One day you're starving and the next day you're fine Ow-wee. Yip, 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 yip